Good morning. Welcome to worship. Would you please rise as we begin? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. you are the treasured people of the Lord, a people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Please join us as we pray. Mighty God, you are the everlasting God. You alone give power to the weak and strength to those who have none. Fill our hearts with your Spirit that we would strengthen one another with our words and our actions. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith in the words of Luther's explanation of the second article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, and has freed me from sin, death, and the power of the devil not with silver and gold, but with his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. He has done all this in order that I might be his own, live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, even as he is risen from the dead and lives and reigns for all eternity. This is most certainly true. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please turn to your neighbor and share with them a sign of our Lord's peace. Our giving jar for this month goes to Faith in Action. 
that does a number of things in the, in the, in the community for helping those who, who are in need. So young ones, let's see what we can find among us. The scripture reading, uh, first reading is from Nehemiah 8, 5 to 10, your Bible page 379 to 380. And Ezra opened the door in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also the Levites, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabatha, Hodiah, Messiah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabad, Hannah, Peliah, helped the people to understand the law while the people remained in their places. So they read from the book from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense that the people, so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The responsive reading is Psalms 100. Please uh, respond with a bold print. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. The second... Reading is from 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 5, 11. 
in your Bible, page 960. <clears throat> but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, though Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, this is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This ends the reading. And I ask if you are able, would you please rise in honor of our gospel reading. Our reading for this Sunday of encouragement is John the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. And please be seated.
I'd like the, the children to come up and join me just for a few minutes. We're talking about encouragement today. Isn't that like a big word? Encouragement. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. Got something in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to think about something. To wonder if you've ever been encouraged to do something. And I know that you have. I can think of one thing that I bet you were encouraged to do by your parents, by your grandparents, maybe even your great-grandparents, that you probably don't remember at all. That was learning to walk. You all learned to walk, didn't you? I think you all walked up here, right? Do you have a little brother or sister? Some no, because you're the little brother or sister. But they could remember you walking. Can you remember some of the things that happened? It's like when you took your first step, they may have clapped their hands, celebrated, smiled. It was good. You took more steps. You had some things like, come here, come here, come to mom, come to dad, come to grandpa. Well, if you really want to, you can come to grandma. <laughs> Right? And they helped you walk because you were encouraged and you don't even remember it. It's how we sometimes care about each other is doing encouraging things for each other. Now, there's something else you get encouraged to do. Just about every Sunday. And you might even kind of take it for granted and don't hear it. But when you come up here for the children's sermon and we get done... Something happens to encourage you. Can you tell me what that is? It's not getting candy. That encourages me a lot. But <laughs> What else happens that we do to encourage you? You think of something? I bet people out there know. What happens when you, you, well, you're getting the candy and you're getting, going back to your seats? What happens? Something we do for each other. And it's pretty simple. In fact, it's really basic. There's a line in what we do for you that, that a, a great theologian who wrote in great big words was once asked if after all the years of the study of the Bible and the teachings of the church, he could sum up his faith. And he said, yes, I can do it very easily. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. So where do you hear that? We're going to hear it pretty soon, aren't we? Well, let me pray, and then we're going to encourage you. You remember how? Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the wonderful ways you bless us, for the life you give us, and how much you love us, and tell us those through the Bible. So, the hand of the candy... Should we encourage our children with the song? Jesus loves me, this I know. This is Everybody got something? Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to start out with a, uh, a little bit of something that you may not immediately think has anything to do with the sermon. 
Well, it, it, it is a little bit of a stretch, but it really does. And this is what I want to say, is that yesterday was, for Deb and me, our anniversary. And if you wonder how long it's been, I, I thank you. I, I think it's been all of my life. <laughs> uh, 45 years, I guess. So that's not all my life. Now, this is, this is kind of getting to the point that if we were married on June 10th, we went to Green Bay on our honeymoon. We did. <laughs> she knows what's coming. Now, that means our first full day as husband and wife was June 11th. And we spent that entire day in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I found out a few years later that this was Vince Lombardi's birthday. So here, can you imagine, our first full day as husband and wife was spent in Green Bay, Wisconsin on Vince Lombardi's birthday. Now that, that marriage was destined for good things, wasn't it? <laughs> it had to be. <laughs> well, this is how it has to do with the message. That, you know, sometimes an encouragement, and Paul does this in the letter to the Thessalonians, we encourage in faith by just the basics of faith. It is said that the Packers at one point in Lombardi's coaching time had gone through a couple, three games in which they had not played anywhere near to his standards. And he said, we're going to get back to the basics. And he called them into the training room and he reached down in a bag and he pulled out this sort of roundish oblong shaped object and said, gentlemen, this is a football. Well, it's almost that basic what Paul tells the Thessalonians to encourage them and the words that he tells to use to encourage one another. The words were, we believe that Jesus died and rose again and we will be with the Lord forever. Now the specific situation he addresses in Thessalonica and I'm going to talk about it a while, but it's not quite like anything that you and I would very likely to, be, to experience. But it's important to understand how that basic message was to be used to encourage them during this concern that they had. Because as, even though we have different concerns than, than they do, the same message is true for us. You know, the basic way we continue to encourage each other in every difficult crisis situation, I mean, there are some specific things we can do, but there's still the foundation that we're called back to. And that is, we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and we will be with the Lord forever. Now, let's go to Thessalonica in the first century A.D. Paul, along with Silas and perhaps Timothy, come to the city in his second missionary journey. And this is probably around 50 AD. Thessalonica was one of the major cities in the Roman Empire, had a population of at least 200,000, they say, and probably a great deal more than that. We know that it had a large Jewish synagogue, implied by Luke, incidentally, you can read this in the 17th chapter of Acts. Um, by, by what you would glean from reading about what Luke says about the synagogue, it was probably a fairly influential community. Um, and Paul begins his ministry there, as he frequently did when his synagogue was available, by going to the synagogue, meets with his fellow Jews. And he explains to them how the scriptures were fulfilled as Jesus died and rose again. If this was the evidence that he fulfilled the, the Old Testament prophecies and that he was the Messiah. He spent three weeks doing that, Luke tells us. At the end of that time, it seems that the biggest part of that synagogue, the most influential part at least, still were, were not understanding what he was saying, did not go along with it. But among those who did were many Greeks and prominent women, Luke says. And remember, he said that when you see that term, 
associated with the synagogue. It's referring to uh, people out of the Greek culture, and for Paul probably means everybody but the Jews here, who were curious about Judaism, who were attracted to the one God of the Jews, to the moral teachings of the Jews, but did not want to convert to Judaism and do all the other things that Jews did. And it was in this group that when he believed that the huge portion of early converts to Christianity come from. This was certainly true in Thessalonica. Again, Paul tells us this, that many of these Greeks, among them some prominent women in the community, came to believe what Paul was saying about Jesus. Because they weren't getting anywhere in the synagogue, they go and they start their own community of faith. That continues to grow. And at a one point, the leaders of the synagogue get upset about the growth of this other community. And so they deliberately cause a disturbance in the city. The result of this disturbance is that Jason, the leader of this new community of people in Christ, and some other leaders in the community have to post a bond. And on that evening, Paul and Silas leave the city. Now what's important about that is when Paul leaves Thessalonica, the congregation is in some difficult times. And he is clearly concerned about that. Now after he leaves Thessalonica, he eventually is going to wind up in Corinth. There's a couple of stops along the way. But in this time going to Corinth, he is so concerned about the believers in Thessalonica that he sends Timothy back to check up on them. When he gets to Corinth, and he's been there a little while, Timothy catches up with him. Comes back and says, Paul, they're doing great. They're just doing great. They're hanging in there against the opposition. They're doing good. He says, they do have some questions, though, some concerns. And so this is what causes Paul to write the first letter to the Thessalonians. Probably the second letter that he wrote. Some scholars think it's the first, but it, I think most believe the evidence is best that Galatians is first and 1 Thessalonians is the second letter that he wrote. He is very thankful for their strong faith, but then he addresses some concerns. And in our lesson today, from which the, the words encourage one another are, are so significant, they're dealing with something that is not like what we deal with. But when we understand it, we can understand what he's saying, why he's saying it, and maybe a bit of how then this is going to apply to us. To know what they were concerned about, we first again remember that in the early years of the Christian church, that part of the message of the gospel about Jesus returning was very prominent. Well, we still talk about it, but it's been, you know, many, many centuries, and so we're, we're not as convinced that it's going to be immediate as they were. They were pretty convinced that even if Jesus is not going to be here by Tuesday afternoon, he's certainly going to come in our lifetime. And so they, they, they lived in anticipation of this. That's part one. Part two is remember that these were, again, people who did not grow up in, were not immersed in what we would call the Old Testament. The believers in the first century were just called the scriptures. They didn't have the same understanding of a life after death that did the Jews. You know, their, their exposure to the scriptures had not been that intense. Paul had talked later about the time, earlier about the times they worshiped idols. So they had come out of idol worship. And in, in many of these idol worshiping cults, there either was no life after death. In other words, when you died, that was just period, the end. Or if there was a life after death, it was a kind of a shadowy, misty existence. It wasn't what we call hell, but it was a long ways from heaven. And, and, and the belief would be that once you were there, you were there. That was just it. 
So with, with that in mind, you know, they're looking forward to the coming of Christ. They believe when people die, that's pretty much the end of things for them. Now they've had some of their members die. So the concern is, when Jesus comes, what does that mean for our brothers and sisters in faith who have died? Are they just not going to be included? You see their concern. And that's why Paul writes these words. We see especially there in 1 Corinthians 4. Um, and notice how Paul starts out to address their concern. He says, remember, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. In other words, he's overcome this. He's overcome this dying. Jesus has taken care of this. And Paul goes on and talks about some of the things that would happen when Jesus actually does return. And those details have various understandings throughout the church's history. But he concludes that portion with the affirmation, for we will be with the Lord forever. Those are the basics. And he says, encourage one another with these words. When you have confusion about things, when you have concern about things, encourage one another with these words. We believe Jesus died and rose again, and we will be with the Lord forever. Now, we have different concerns today that what bothered the Thessalonians, I would be very surprised if it bothers any of us. But we have other concerns. I'm sure all of us have had times in our lives in which the situation of life and what we believe in our faith didn't work together very well. Many of us have gone through experiences in which we had some kind of a crisis situation in our lives. May have been an illness of a family member or somebody very close to us. May have been a crisis in, in, in work or in community. It may, may have been our, our marriage or family going through an extremely difficult time. And we were in prayer at that time. We were in intense prayer in some cases. We were in prayer knowing that if God answered our prayer the way we wanted God to answer our prayer, it would bring us joy, it would be a blessing to us and others, and it would bring glory to God. And yet you know where I'm going. We went through those times and the prayer wasn't answered like we thought it should have been answered. It would seem to the world and outside that maybe the prayer wasn't answered at all and maybe it wasn't even heard. And those times we may have wondered the same thing. We can add to those crisis times. We know that, that it, it's, it's more of a challenge to be a Christ follower today than it's been in years past. The community still thinks it's a good thing. But we know that Sunday mornings, you know, I've, I've seen this, that I'm old enough to remember that on Sundays, pretty much the only thing that was open was the church. So people went to church. <laughs> yeah, part of it, there was nothing else to do, but it <laughs> the church. But today we know that's just not true at all, is it? It takes a, an act of will. And some of us are concerned that, that our family members, our children, grandchildren perhaps, and others, are get caught up in these other things so much that they don't really have time for God anymore, it seems. We worry about those things. Concerned about those things. We may hear things in, on, in the media, on something on television about some supposed expert historian or a group of, of a panel of people who talk about the life of Jesus and they say, well, he was, you know, something akin to an incredibly insightful teacher. And it's just these Jews that somehow, these Christians, excuse me, somehow think that he rose from the dead. Well, to all of this, I think if Paul was going to write a letter, he'd come back and tell us the same thing. He'd first say, in all of these times that you don't understand, 
that no one's going to be able to explain because sometimes none of us really understand. Go back to the basics. Remember, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And by the way, that is one of the most provable facts in history. Whenever you hear somebody in the media saying something about, you know, trying to dismiss this as saying that this is what some Christians believe, well, that's true, but there's more to it. One of our great writers and insightful scholars is a man, a British man named N.T. Wright, former bishop of Durham, professor of seminary. He's written a lot of stuff. But he says, as an historian, he believes that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the most provable incident in the history of the world. He said it's pretty hard to explain the existence of the Christian church and deny the resurrection of Jesus. Because this is what changed those disciples from being people beaten down by the death of their Messiah, their leader, to be the ones who are talking about that he is risen. And that drove their lives from then on. Because it's pretty hard to explain the existence of the Christian church and say that didn't happen. So that's where we go back to. We believe that. We proclaim that it's true, that it's the central event of history, that all history points to and comes from. He died and he rose again. It means death is overcome. We have a lot of other things we can't understand, but we hear that word. And he concludes with that great promise. And we will be with the Lord forever. So yes, there's a lot of things in this life that don't make sense. And I have to say, the older I get, the longer that list gets. <laughs> but this we hear. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And we will be with the Lord forever. And incidentally, in your bulletin, once again, I, I thank so much our worship planning team. Those folks are just brilliant. They come up with another insert for us with some things that we can do to encourage one another, some concrete things we can do to, to always remind us of faith. And I encourage you to look through this. Really consider putting one or more of these into practice this week. Um, turn off the news and open the Bible. I'd always suggest that one. But, you know, just thank people for being here. Because one of the great encouraging things, I can say as a pastor, everybody, is just being here on Sunday morning. I encourage you to you know, consider this. Making attendance, even during the summer months of Wisconsin, a priority for you. Because isn't it true that when you come into church on Sunday morning and it's fuller than you expect, it feels good, doesn't it? It does. When you come in and it's less full, it doesn't feel so good. So every person who is present in worship today is an encourager. And if you can't make it on Sunday morning, we've got Wednesday night. And Wednesday night's a good time to come to church too. Some of you make it then. We're even going to have fellowship after Wednesday night. We did last time, we're going to do it again. So you, you, you can come on Wednesday night and, and, and get a piece of good tasting stuff. <laughs> I won't promise good health, but I promise good tasting stuff. <laughs> and sit down and chat with people. And, and that's, that's good. And there's even, we're even doing special music on Wednesday night. Now that's Pastor Dave and company. We, we talked about this and we agreed that I would not do special music. <laughs> the conclusion was if I do it, it will be special. <laughs> and it we talked about, but not in the right way. And also, when you leave today, we're going to give you a little encouragement. A Christian fortune cookie. It's got a scripture verse inside. In fact, make sure you get one, because that's, that's, that's kind of going to be your ticket to leave. <laughs> okay, not literally, but kind of. <laughs> You've got to have a fortune cookie to get out of the sanctuary. Is that? Well, again, this is the basics. 
No matter what you're going through, go back to the basics, encourage one another with these words. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and we will be with the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Would you please rise if you're able? I didn't use any of my slides, so I forgot my slides. I didn't want to use them. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? <clears throat> Lord Jesus, as sometimes we struggle in faith, help our hearts and minds remember that you died and rose again and that you have prepared a place for us where we will be with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious Father, we begin our vacation Bible school this evening. Send your spirit to be powerfully among the teachers, the students, and the volunteers so that our, our knowledge and awareness of you grows and that everyone, both little and larger, are filled with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we see many in our nation and in much of our world trying to live in denial that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Infuse us with the joy of abundant life so in you so that our neighbors will see and come to call you Lord. Enliven your whole church to bring, to bring revival to our whole nation and to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious Father, thank you for blessing us with your fullness as your church. You have richly provided what we have needed. We lift, you to the, you, we lift you to you, the Kalk team, as they continue to pursue an associate pastor and our personnel team as we seek a team's coordinator. Bring to us those whom your spirit knows will, be, will best fill these ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we lift to you those who need your healing. We lift to you Jerry Sheets and June Potter, Tom Peterson, Bud Johnson, Darlene Petska, and John Anderson, Renee Burnt, and Chad Tracy, and Carolee Lindenberg. May they have a sure confidence in your loving care. And we lift to you Bob Conan's family as they mourn his loss. May they see in death the gate to eternal life. May they see your face in the midst of this. And we also join with family and friends as they pray for Abby and Tim and Linda and Talon and Peggy and Brett and Don and Alyssa and also those that we name in our hearts at this time. We lift to you those in military service, Alex Holly, Ryan Baxter, Tim Davies, and others who you have called to defend our freedom and extend justice. May they know your shepherding hand each and every day. For all of these, Lord, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, may your grace and peace cause us to work boldly. Lead us to encourage one another to strongly believe. May we live every moment in the certain knowledge that we will be with you forever. We lay these petitions and our lives before you. Grant them and whatever else you see that we need. For we pray in the great name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to dismiss, know that Vacation Bible School starts tonight. I think it's from 5.30 to 8 o'clock. Is that right? And, and the, the theme is Twists and Turns. So if you want to join in the fun, come on over and, and, uh, and help. At, there again, share the gospel with our, with your, our young ones. Also, um, many of you already have heard Bob Conant passed away uh, just yesterday. Uh, the arrangements have not yet been finalized, but I, uh, we are, you can be relatively confident the funeral is going to be on Friday, uh, probably at 11 o'clock. Uh, and so I'm just going to ask that you, you watch the Torkelson website, and also if you have questions, uh, contact the church office. So... Uh, and just hold that family up in your prayers. Um, and uh, with that, are there any other announcements that need to be given? Yes, Laura. We are still, would like to collect things for family first, toiletries, and they have special socks. Okay. Yeah, family first, toiletries, and they have special socks. Yeah, and they have special socks. Yeah, they have special socks. Families first needs toiletries and socks. So, and the, any size of socks. Annette. And we have a hungry Hungry. 
Yes, there are openings. Yes. So Hunger Haven, please. Any other announcements? Yes, Darlene. Amen. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Darlene, for that word of encouragement. Yes, any other announcements? Don't forget to pick up your fortune cookie on the way out. And you know, to encourage means to infuse with courage. Yes. So let's infuse each other with courage. May you go in peace, serve the Lord.